This week I'm asking, can I use Sharpie pens and the Wheel of Fortune to find a new creative direction? Hi, I'm Mike, and this is the Sunday Art Show. In addition to working on animals and landscapes that I normally show on the channel, I also work on different subjects, including paintings and drawings of dancers from different eras and in different styles. But despite this wide range of subjects and the different media that I use, it can be really easy to fall into the trap of just doing things habitually and repeating the same style over and over again. So I wanted to share with you a little game I use sometimes to help me find new creative directions. So what I'm going to do is take all the different colours of Sharpie markers that I have, program them into an electronic Wheel of Fortune. I'll put the link to that Wheel of Fortune website in the description below the video if you want to try it out yourself. And then I'm going to use the Wheel of Fortune to help me decide which colours to use for this drawing. So I'm calling this one Dancing with Destiny and letting fate help you create. Okay, so the wheel is ready. Let's give it a spin. So the first colour selected is magenta. So I'm going to spin the wheel again. Let's see what we get for the second colour. Bright blue. Okay, so magenta and bright blue uh, I would use blue a lot in my work typically, so that's not that outside of the box. Magenta, less often, but I do use it a little bit. Let, let's try a third colour and we'll see what we get this time. Orange. OK, so orange I don't use that often, certainly not in combination with those other two colours. So those are the three colours I'm going to go for. So I'm starting out today with the blue uh, Sharpie marker and I'm drawing onto some mixed media paper. And again, I'll put the, like I did last week, I've started putting the list of materials I use in the descriptions for the video. So if you want to try something similar yourselves, then uh, you, know, you can find the materials listed there. In addition, I'll also put a link to Pixabay and the royalty-free image I'm using as a reference. So if you want to do your own version of this particular pair of dancers, then you can do that as well. Now I'm beginning my drawing with a gestural style of drawing. So this is a technique where you look at your subject and rather than trying to precisely depict exact lines, you kind of depict and draw the feeling of movement and weight you get. So I am definitely looking at my reference, but I'm kind of letting my pen flow across the surface of the paper I'm pulling out key observations, but at the same time, I'm also letting my hand wander. And it's a really fun technique to use if you haven't done so before. Highly recommend it because in sort of just letting go a little bit and letting your body and hand and eye automatically and perhaps a little bit subconsciously react to the subject in hand, you can often create quite wonderful lines and effects that you can't do if you're consciously trying to do it. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Yeah, we'll see how this one goes. But, um, but that's the idea of the gestural drawing anyway, to not get too tight, to stay loose, to keep the lines flowing. And I think it's a, a cool technique, especially if you're painting figures or animals, because obviously these are living things and these do move, especially if you're, if you're doing dances like we are today. You know, you want to try and capture a sense of motion in this stationary drawing. So having used the blue, and you, having used that gestural technique, I've now switched to the magenta. And what, I've, what I'm beginning to do now is just selectively tighten up and, and define a few of those lines. So in some cases, I will actually pick out the gestural line that I put down. But in other cases, I'll ignore it completely and just use it as a guide. And again, I'm not going to be going into very much detail with this drawing. So as you can see on the guy's face here, I'm just popping in a couple of little indications of the eyes and nose. I've put in the hairline and defined the head. And so some parts I'll tighten up, some parts I'll leave still nice and loose. But because, you know, as I'm sure you all know, Sharpie markers are, are permanent pens, you know, I can't delete 
anything I've done underneath and it's a, it's a bit of a game to cover it up as well but that's actually a really cool characteristic of this medium I think because you know you have to commit so if, if you if you make a mistake or a line goes a little wayward that's going to be there and, and that's okay you know that's the process of drawing in this loose expressive way so the ink from Sharpie pens it's a little bit translucent so even if I go over the blue some of that's going to show through and within regions where I don't colour in my better defined magenta outline the rather spidery and wonderfully weaving gestural lines I've put down in blue they're going to be showing through so this is almost this almost creates an effect of you know, I don't know if you've ever seen those kind of wire sculptures where people create uh, a humanoid framework in interwoven wire and then they put clay on top so I kind of feel that using these two colors one on top of the other the the, the defined lines over the gestural lines kind of creates that feeling so you can almost see the structure and the energy flowing through these dancers within the, the magenta outlines or maybe I'm overthinking it I don't know but um, it, I like the effect anyway so as you can see I've worked on the sleeve uh, of the of the lady's dress there and just also defining the outline of her face a little bit because you know we're very very good at picking out human features so I feel I feel it's necessary to just position those reasonably carefully so they're recognizable as faces without going into you know a portrait like the level of detail now if you do actually click on the link to take you to the the image on Pixabay you'll see that this is absolutely not an exact copy and it's very much just inspired by the two dancers in the photograph um, and that's something I really like to do is to take a reference photo but just use it as a starting point so you know I'll be adding in little bits of extra hair little bits of extra fabric um, I'm definitely not doing a portrait of the two dancers so you know that's part of the fun if, if these people were here in real life th there would be no way I could capture in a short time a photorealistic representation so I don't even try you know that's not not what I'm aiming to do now one of the things I like doing though uh, when I'm working on the sleeve of a shirt or something is selectively picking out those little triangles the folds and the fabric uh, and they can be really telling and really help convey a sense of three dimensions and the same with the buttons on the waistcoat now at first glance it may look as though I've put those buttons those three buttons in a dead straight line but if you look more carefully there is a slight arc to the to the connecting line between those three buttons and that helps tell you about the posture of the guy's torso and so now we're moving on to the trouser leg and again we'll be capturing just a few of the folds in the fabric so you, you really want to try and avoid getting obsessed with detail you just want to put down enough information to convince the viewer that you've got a dancer here and try and create a feeling of movement so going back to these um, these blue lines within the purple the other way you could interpret them is that the blue lines depict where the dancers were a moment ago so it's almost like strobe photography where you sort of see a series of still images to represent movement so I, I, I'm actually quite liking this effect and I'm also quite liking the combination of magenta and blue uh, which as, as I said at the start of the video I don't use them in you know I, I definitely use both of those colors but not in this way so this simple little game of just using a wheel of fortune or you could throw dice or you could you know you could do whatever you wanted pull pull colors written on pieces of paper pull them out of a hat loads and loads of different ways to randomly select things um, but it's a very powerful little technique um, and you know you might come up with uh, lightning in a bottle as they say you might come up with something which you never would have thought of but produces something miraculous um, and if not of course it's such a quick thing that you haven't really wasted any time now I've just put in some outlines for the lady's lower leg there and the upper one of those came out a little bit jagged more more so than I would have liked um, but we'll live with that and uh, just press on now I'm, I'm describing her high-heeled shoe which is and her pointed toe 
And then I mustn't forget to include the, the right leg of the male dancer, which is which can be seen in between the two feet of the lady there. So even though I'm tightening up and refining the lines with the magenta, I'm still trying to stay fairly loose, you know, um, definitely not as loose as with the blue, but uh, we don't want things to be too, too tight. Right now I'm switching to the final colour of the day. This is the orange. And as I said, when the Wheel of Fortune chose these colours for me, I definitely wouldn't use orange and blue and magenta in combo typically in my work. It's not something I've done at all, I don't think. So, so you know, this is a nice new little experiment for me. And what I'm doing with the oranges, I've decided to just selectively block in certain areas. So as you can see, I've coloured in part of the collar of the man's shirt and I've coloured in the sleeve of the same shirt. And that helps to just pick out the line of the waistcoat. And I've just put a little bit of extra orange in around the, the cuff on his other hand, which is holding the lady's back. I'm just thinking now at the moment, OK, where, where else do I need some orange? Because I don't again, I don't want to overdo it, but uh, I feel it definitely needs some more. So I begin working on the, the dress of the lady, but in a rather more loose fashion. So you can see that I'm the lines I've used to almost colour in. I've kept them matching the contours of her of her arm to help create a little bit of sense of three dimensions. And I'm doing the same now on the torso of her dress. But I'm not colouring in quite so meticulously as I did with the guy's shirt. So the, you know, the guy is strong and perhaps the shirt is a little more rigid than the, the fabric of the dress. But the, the dress, we definitely want to feel like it's free flowing and moving. So as I move down to the skirt, I'm going back to a looser treatment there, even looser than on the torso, and just filling in different areas with some colour, trying to keep this feeling of dance and movement going throughout the drawing. So looking at this now with a, with a critical eye, um, my favourite bit is probably the, the guy, I think. I feel I've captured a real sense of weight and a sense of intention. You know, I feel he's, he really feels as if he's about to go on the move off to the left. I'm less happy with the, the head of the woman, um, but you know, it, it's okay, it's a loose description and overall I feel the drawing works, the work so far. And I've just switched back to magenta now, blocking in the shoes. And what, what I'm going to do, you'll notice, is I do leave a little bit uncoloured in and that's just to hint at the reflection on the shoes there. So. The other thing you could do with the Wheel of Fortune is rather than just pick out colours, you could pick out different colour, uh, different media combinations. So you could put on watercolour, acrylic, ink tents blocks, coloured pencils, biro, marker pens, uh, Sharpie markers, charcoal, you know, all sorts of different things. And then you could come up with a, a media combination and see how that goes. But back to our drawing, you can see it's starting to take shape now. And by switching back to the magenta, I'm just kind of balancing out the tonal areas of the drawing by including some of the deep magenta on the guy's shoes, on his hair, and then also on the lady's hair as well. So we've got a little bit of deep tone top and bottom, a quick signature. And that's this one uh, pretty much done after I include the reflections in the floor. So that's pretty much it for this drawing. As usual, I put a link to the high resolution image on my website in the, in the description below the video. So if you want to check out the line work and the shading that I've used in more detail, you can click on that link and then click on the image on the website and it will give you a blow up of the high resolution photograph and you can move around the image and look at different areas. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.